what are we looking at there over your shoulder? Doctor? Here you're obviously seeing um, a more in-depth look at that varicose vein. You can see the tortuosity again. And again, this is what I alluded to. Here you can see the valves. These valves are one-way set of valves. So every time, think about it, every time you take a step, the muscles contract, that pushes the blood up past these valves. And the valves stay at this position, they close on them themselves, preventing the blood from falling back down. When you take another step, it goes to the next set of valves, all right? Anywhere from your ankle up to your hip, you can have anywhere from a set, a eight to 10 set of valves, all right? And in this picture, you're clearly seeing the dysfunction of the valve, which prompts the blood to fall all the way back down to your feet, causing increased pressure inside the venous system. All right. Great, thank you for that information. All right, doctor, join me back here because we have a photo now of some of those stages that we were talking about. And let's take that and show our viewers. Doctor, let's talk about these. Obviously the left being a normal picture of a leg with normal veins. And then through the progression of time, let's talk about what's happening through Correct. stage one through stage there four. There you see in stage one, you start to see the development of reticular veins and spider veins. Uh, stage two, you start seeing the development of varicose veins or venous nodules, typically defined as a vein greater than three millimeters uh, in dimension. These are pretty serious. Correct. And then by this time, the patient's obviously acknowledging them. And sometimes, uh, often the patient comes in with complaints of uh, they're painful or they're bleeding spontaneously. Ooh. Uh, stage three, you start seeing lower, uh, lower extremity swelling. Well, that's what edema uh, means. Um, and then stage four is when you start to actually see the, the extent or the worst portion of the disease, where you start to see hyperpigmentation, so that's discoloration of the skin, and that's actually what we call hemosiderin deposits. So if you think about it, when you breathe in air, um, we extract, our lungs extract the oxygen. The oxygen actually has to transport, uh, the blood has to transport the oxygen to the rest of the body. It does so bound to iron. So when you get the blood pooling, you have that iron deposits sitting in that skin, and that's where you get the discoloration. With time, that can cause ulcerations. Now, and we're not talking about a period of you know, uh, one to two days or months or years, we're talking about over uh, 20, 30 years.